Why don't people take bigger action? They say they want something, and yet they don't do it. I believe it's because they've never been taught how to make educated decisions. Deep breath in. I would like to teach you my five-step process for making educated decisions. Would you like to know what it is? Yes. yes. This is especially useful. You can use this for any situation, but it's especially useful for decisions that need to be made around, that, that involve money. Why would I be saying that? What decisions that have to do with money are more difficult? Why? A lot of emotion tied to money. Yep, David? The risk. The risk. Absolutely. For some reason, somebody Making a regular decision is like yes or no. When it involves money, money it's like there's this whole, they're, they're like all wrapped up. And I think it is the emotion and the risk. And so I'm going to take you through my five-step process, okay? This is what I use myself to make decisions. In fact, I talked to a couple people. I came down early at 7.45 this morning, and I talked to a couple people who wanted to talk to me about um, the invitation that I made yesterday afternoon. And there's a lot of angst. There's, there's a lot of angst for some people. Some people are like, oh, yeah, done, right? And then emotion and crying and, and stuff like that. So if you... If you are in this room and you're, you're thinking you want to do that, you can use this five-step process for that. But just know that you have this five-step process for any decision you want to make. If you want to hire a virtual assistant, use this process. If you want to hire a book coach, use this process. If you want to, um, in your business, if you want to bring on a business partner, use this process. If you want to get a new office, but it's it's whoa, you know, it's, it's a risk, use this process, okay? So, number one, get clear on your goals. A lot of times we make decisions without knowing. My father always, ta always said this to me as I was growing up. He still uses it today. If I come to him with a question, he says, well, before we even discuss anything, he says, quel est ton objectif? What is your objective? What is your goal? What is the end result that you're looking for? And throughout my life, and in fact, I, I, with a lot of you, when you ask me a question, I always start with, what is your objective? What is the ideal end re result? And then let's reverse and en engineer from there. Okay? So get clear on your goals. Once you're clear on your goals, can ask yourself, can saying yes to this opportunity get me closer, faster to my goal? Right? So you ask yourself that. Number two, calculate your return on investment. What I ask myself in a decision-making process like that is, if I could make back my financial investment by two to four times over my lifetime, would this be a smart investment? What about if it were 10 times the initial investment? Would that be a smart investment? Yes. If the answer is yes, then this is part of the decision-making process. So one, it's going to get you closer to your goal, faster, and you're going to get a return on investment. So far, sounds good. Number three, consider, consider the alternative. What happens if I don't say yes? Would I be in the exact same situation in one year? Would I be in the exact situa same situation in five years? If the answer is yes, I would be in the same situation, yes, I wouldn't make much progress, then the answer would be like, 
you should probably do, say yes to the opportunity, whatever that is. You've got to look at the alternative, like, okay, it's not just about the decision, it's about the lost opportunity, right? And calculating what that means for you. Number four, I'm a spiritual person, I'm always gonna consult my intuition. And you should too. And can I tell you why? There are, I'm gonna speak about, I'm gonna teach you about this later today. There are two voices happening in, inside at all times. Did you know that? There's two messages that you hear on the inside. There's a loud one that says, no, don't do it, fear-based, ego, stay small, don't go big, you know, don't go, what, is it too big for your britches? Don't, just, just stay status quo. There's that voice, and it's negative, and it's loud, and it's telling you not to go beyond your existing comfort zone. And at all times, there's also, if you listen for it, a very subtle voice. And it's kind. And it's loving. And it says, you deserve the very best of everything. You deserve the best support. You deserve the best light. You deserve to play a bigger game, or you deserve to get that kind of help. I believe in you. And that voice is very supportive. And that is the voice of your intuition, which is what? What is your, the voice of the intuition? It's connected to the divine. So essentially, the divine, if you consult your intuition, the divine will tell you what to do and what not to do. The problem is, which voice, Anna, which voice do people listen to? Typically, they listen to their head, the voice of the ego that says, stay small. Don't do this. It uses fear. It uses bullying tactics. Right? So it's actually quite a skill to put it to the side and to listen for the intuition. So I ask myself always, if I silence my fears, which is right here, if I silence my fears for a moment, what does my gut tell me? What does my heart tell me about what to do about this situation? Do I feel happily pulled into my future, into my bigger future, by doing this? And if the answer is yes, that's the voice I listen to. Do you want to know why? because that's the voice of faith. This is the voice of fear. And I do not make decisions based on fear. I make decisions based on faith. Number five, trust yourself. Sometimes we've said yes in here. Like I spoke to a woman, I gave her a big hug. There were tears in her eyes this morning. And she said, I want to do this. It's all filled out. And I said, what's going on? Trust yourself. What does your, what does your gut tell you? This would be a good thing for me. Trust yourself. People, people doubt their decisions. They make a decision and then they talk themselves out of it. What is up with that? Remember the first thing that I talked about? Uh, are we really on day three? Yeah. Wow. First thing I talked about Monday, day one, is I talked about indecision and waffling. Remember? Indecision. I make a decision, oh, la, 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 change my mind. Oh, la, 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 la. It's like telling the universe, you know, that you want. It's the chaotic vibration. Trust yourself. Trust yourself that you're going to do the right thing. Ask yourself, if I came from a place of faith rather than fear, would I say yes? Would I say yes to that virtual assistant, to that office, maybe to this program, maybe to write a book with this partner, taking on a business partner? Would, even in my relationships, 
if I came from a place of faith rather than fear, would I say yes to being with this person? These are the five ways that I've, I've come to make decisions. Now, I, have I always made 100% the right decisions? No, but it's usually the decisions I regret are the ones that I made before using this five-step process. <laughs> 